Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And you're back with me, Cool Dude Clem. In this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I'm going to start work on the amplifier and I thought I might just as well start with the tone control. On my workbench you can see my electronic parts and the various different tools that I'm going to use. And you might notice the sound is better as well. well. That's because I've made a much better microphone. And here it is. Just a little electric capacitor microphone on a wire. And that's going to this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder here. I'll just clip the microphone back on my chest. So, not using the camera's microphone, so there'll be no more of that weird merp in the background. Oh, that was a bit of a crappy impression of it, but you might be wondering how you can hear this and it's not even recording. Well, I got the cassette deck doing the recording. This is the schematic of the tone control I'm going to build. Obviously, I'm going to build two of these because I want stereo. And I got all of the parts to build this tone control from Bowwood Electronics. And I would really recommend that to anybody who's trying to find components. They're not overpriced like Maplin. Also, to help me out on the capacitors, because they're never written as, say, 10 nanofarad or 100 picofarad or whatever, I've put the little numbers that are going to be on the capacitors next to each one, so I can find them nice and easily. Firstly, you've got to clear up this little catastrophe here. This box of various different bits and pieces just fell off my filing cabinet here, so I'm going to have to pick all that up and put it back in. Of course, it would have had to have landed right on my records, wouldn't it? Fortunately, it didn't land right next to any records that are exposed, so it's not going to hopefully didn't scratch anything. Anyway, I'm going to pick all this stuff up and then start with the build. Work on the tone control has begun, as you can probably see. I've got a couple of potentiometers here and a whole bunch of capacitors and resistors. You can all see it's done with point-to-point -point wiring because I thought it would just be easier to do it that way. And here on the schematic, I'll show you the part of it that I've actually built. It's this part here, with the capacitors and the potentiometers and everything. I haven't built the buffer stage or the output preamp. And actually, I don't think I'm going to need to build those because this seems to pass the signal pretty good. It doesn't seem to be much of a signal loss. Anyway, I have the reel-to-reel -reel queued up with some music and I'm going to play some music through the tone control. And, oops, camera's trying to commit suicide. And we'll see how good it works. Now, what's the betting that one of these controls, or maybe even both of them, are going to be the wrong way around? But anyway, I'll just start the reel to reel now. And we'll see what we get. Uh, that seemed to work but wouldn't you know one of the controls is the wrong way around and it's the treble control you turn it down and the treble goes up also the microphone is being played through this as well because the reel-to-reel -reel is being used as the microphone preamp so you turn it down and the treble goes up you turn it all the way up and the treble goes down so that needs a little bit of a correction Fortunately, that's going to be quite an easy fix. All I need to do is take this capacitor and connect it to this one here and connect this capacitor to that pin there and it should be all just absolutely fine. And then I'm going to build the other tone control and then work on the actual amplifier itself. Guys, we have a problem. Or rather, I have a problem. Still got treble trouble. You might remember in the first test that I did I discovered that I'd got this wired up back to front, so I had to turn it down to make it go up and turn it up to make it go down. There is another little problem with it that I didn't mention. 
And that's when it was in the center position, it was boosting the treble like it was turned up a little bit. And I'm sure as you heard when I had the microphone connected through this, there was a lot more treble than there should be, even though both the controls were in their center position. And when I wired this up the right way around, this time it was doing exactly the opposite. With the control in the middle, it was cutting the treble, like the treble was being turned down a bit. I've been puzzling over this, trying to figure out what's actually going on, because it shouldn't do that. I mean, that's not normal behaviour for a circuit like this. And I'm not certain, but I think I've accidentally used a logarithmic potentiometer here, and they should both be linear. I'm almost certain that the base one is linear, but like I said, I'm not sure about the treble. So what I'm going to do is test these with the meter. That's why I've got everything all disconnected, so I don't get any false readings here. And with the controls set to their center position, if I get more ohms on one side than I do on the other, I know I've used a logarithmic potentiometer. So, let's just test the base one first. Okay, we've got 19 ohms that side. And about 22 ohms that side. That's pretty much what I'd expect from a linear potentiometer. Now I'll test the treble one, and let's see what we got. Alright, 38 kilo ohms there. And here, hmm, only about six and a half. So, I think that explains it. This one is definitely logarithmic. Okay, it's much later on now, and I've replaced that potentiometer, so they're both now linear. Now, with all the bad luck that I have, I'm not expecting miracles or anything like that, but it should work much better. Again, I have the reel-to-reel -reel queued up, ready to play some music. And again, the microphone is playing through this, because, you know, the reel-to-reel -reel is also being used as the microphone preamp. Anyway, I'm going to start it up. And let's see if it works. Rolls around. I'm out of here, man. I'm going to town. You finally lay your burden down. I'm nobody's fool. I'm nobody's clown. Close up your books. Get out of your seat. This is a plan that can't. Well, I'm actually surprised that that is working the way I want it to now. And if you look, I've got both the controls set to their to their center point, and as you can hear, the tone is normal. But you know the bad thing about this. I've gone and made the same mistake with the other one. I just tested this, and yep, I've used a logarithmic potentiometer on the treble part. I cannot believe I made that exact same mistake twice. I think, and I'm not certain about this, but I think you can identify whether a potentiometer is a logarithmic or not by whether it has B or A on it. This one has A on it, and it's it says A, 47K. This one says B, 47K. This is the logarithmic potentiometer I took out. And this is just a, another linear one. So, I'm going to test this potentiometer here. Just to make sure. First of all, I'll set this into its center position. Now, I'm pretty sure this one is a linear one because it's got B on it, but... This one, I'm not so sure about. No, but I'm pretty sure it is... A logarithmic one, so let's see what we got. Okay, only 6.7 kilo ohms there. Yep, that one is a logarithmic as well. Would you believe it? That, so that's what I'm going to do now. Make this into a... Just fix that little problem. And then in the next video, I'll get on with the amplifier. So that's it from Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like my videos, then click the meter right now to go to my channel. Or, if you want to see the previous episode of Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Oh, there's my finger right there. But anyway, that's it. So, until next time, goodbye. Because the space on my camera is just about to run out.